yeah hi everyone hopefully you can you can hear me uh thanks to luke and, and co for the invitation to come and talk and hopefully i can say something interesting no guarantee it's going to be exciting but i'll try my best and um, just a quick note about the slides they've got this kind of black mesh on the left hand side on the on the slides i've got they're, they're kind of a very subtle gray color um so it's meant to be it's meant to be attractive but it's, it makes them a bit hard to read so uh yeah apologies for that um a little bit about me i'm uh work at transport for greater manchester i'm a project manager in the cycling and walking team um just a little note before we start procurement started for this scheme um at the end of last month so all the stuff i can really talk about is stuff that's in the public domain so you know, I'm, I'm a bit limited on stuff I can say, but hopefully I'll be as open and candid as I can um, with things. Okay, so just a bit of context for those of you who don't know about Greater Manchester. Um, it's split into 10 metropolitan boroughs or local authorities. And the GMCA is the, the Greater Manchester Combined Authority, is the administrative authority of, that, of those um, metropolitan boroughs. And TFGM is the transport executive for the GMCA. So we're... Uh, um, responsible for sort of strategic transport and we run things like Metrolink but we don't manage any road or own particularly loads of land in, 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 in the Greater Manchester area so kind of a bit like TFL but not as powerful I suppose or wide ranging. Um, and then just a little bit about the history of bike hire, very potted history. Um, Andy Burnham, uh, our Metropolitan Mayor who was elected in May 2017, he made a manifesto commitment about bike hire, I put his, his quote on the right there. There was quite a lot of manifesto commitments, but it was nice to get a mention by Kaya. Um, one of the first things he did was to appoint Chris Boardman as the cycling and walking commissioner. Um, he published a strategy called Made to Move, uh, which had outlined a kind of 15 step approach to transforming the greater Manchester city region into a, a better place to cycle and walk around and be more active, sustainable, reducing carbon emissions, making healthier, uh, healthier streets and all that kind of stuff. And step 13 was specifically around access to bikes, where bike hire sits. Um, as Graham and his, his colleagues sort of alluded to, we had the, the Mobike trial demonstrator that ran sort of uh, 2017 to autumn 2018. After they left, um, TFGM were instructed by Chris Boardman, uh, September 2017, 2018, sorry, to start to develop a GM bike hire scheme um, on behalf of the the combined authority which is kind of where we come on it come in as a, a team i guess so that's where it all started so just to put the bike high scheme into context of some of the strategies that the gmca have so we're not light on strategies at the uh, transport for greater manchester or in the combined authority so there's a 2040 transport strategy which i think directly mentions a, a bike high scheme um, made to move which i just mentioned the 15 step approach is kind of a, a a short term implement trying to implement that wider strategy there's the greater manchester clean air plan uh, which obviously bike hire and getting more people to travel more actively dovetails into quite nicely is the hour network which i've got a slide on in a second which is kind of the integration across all transport modes and there's a, a nice picture of the, the hour network death star that i'll show you in a second and then finally, there's the streets for all approach, which is how Greater Manchester is going to try and create streets that are for people rather than for traffic and includes things like reallocating road space and um, wayfinding and um, making sure that streets are appropriate for the, their actual use. So residential streets versus you know, sort of um, motorways or whatever. Um, and overall, a lot of these two strategies do come back to what we want to do is increase the number of trips undertaken by cycling to I think, double the level from about 4% to 8% and then double it again it was by 2025 to do that um, and then I think recognize I think in line with what other people have said from, from the university that bike car itself is only a very small part of you know encouraging people to travel or actively or to try, try and make our uh, environment a bit more healthy but yeah part of it is providing a high quality cycling and walking network across the region and um, yeah bike hire is specifically addressing one of the key barriers to cycling which is access to a bike providing access to a bike for people who don't normally have one or don't have one at the moment or you know don't find it that convenient to carry their own around town um, 
So we translated this into a vision and a mission statement for, for Baikalia within GM. So I think the overriding idea with the vision and mission statement was to try and make something that is as disagreeable as possible. So th this is the Death Star where we were talking about the our network place, and that kind of shows all the different modes of transport around Greater Manchester and how they, they link. And if you search for our network and TFGM, you find a little animation of that, which is quite quite interesting to watch, which shows how trams, trains, buses, cycling network and bike hire and walking sort of are trying to integrate into you know, making a seamless transport journey across Greater Manchester, breaking down the barriers to to um, more active travel. Um, yeah, and like I said, I don't think anyone could disagree with those mission statements around bike hire. Um, and as we've been developing the scheme in a bit more detail, we've tried to prioritise some of the benefits for bike hire. So um, some of the benefits of the scheme that we see if we manage to, to, to get implemented correctly, increasing the active travel, more healthy trips, normalising cycling as a viable transport mode. So I think promoting it, so promoting it as a way that people can get about without having to have a lot of kit, um, putting them on you know, a fair few num fair few street corners, so making the suggestion to people that cycling is a, a viable mode of transport. It's open to you. You can do it with a easily, fairly easily. And um, the next one, establishing cycling as a safe mode of transport, as was kind of touched on earlier on about the barriers to cycling and that kind of feeling of safety that you know is one of the main barriers to taking up cycling. I think it's obviously a bit it can be a bit of a double-edged sword, sort of encouraging people to cycle when the prevailing environment isn't perceived to be safe. But one of the things I see the scheme has been able to do is that you could use it to promote a good infrastructure that does exist across Greater Manchester. In some of the cottages that are there and some of them are some of the routes that are coming on board, you could promote, use the cycle scheme to promote people using those, um, those routes. And then as we go down connectivity, yeah, uh, to try and, like I said before, link it with other transport modes, people using the trams, the trains, buses, for the next stage of their journey, or as an alternative to parts of their journey, promoting cycling for that leg. Um, social distance is an interesting one in, 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 with respect to the, the COVID stuff. I was talking to someone from TfL the other day, and um, apparently over the last few months, it's been the first time, well, not, not surprising the first time, that they generated more income from their bike hire from TfL cycle hire scheme than was generated on the underground network, which was a, an incredible achievement, but you know, probably not that, that surprising. Um, and yet addressing transport inequality, opening up, open up access to a broader demographic. I'll talk about the business model that we're approaching the bike hire scheme and the different kind of options later on. But it's important to recognise that cycle hire is potentially a fairly flexible way of introducing a, a mode of transport to uh, some areas of Manchester that are maybe not as well served by public transport. Um, and yeah, recognising we'll have a fairly, potentially fairly limited effect compared to a, a tram or a, a bus route, but does contribute to reducing congestion and supporting residents in reaching local employment, leisure, uh, shopping activities, whatever, whatever might go on. So uh, just a bit on the, the social value of the scheme what it will bring to residents, what we hope it will bring to residents in the, of the Greater Manchester region. Um, one of the points that was brought up earlier on and one of the lessons we learned from Mobike is that it's important to create a scheme that is owned by residents within Greater Manchester, owned by the communities that it serves. So, you know, the, the area that the scheme covers, where docking stations are located, what it looks like, the branding, um, how people feel they've been engaged in the development of the scheme is important to us and something we're looking to hopefully expand on in the next few months. The scheme, the scheme area that we've kind of identified as the first phase, we reckon it will provide access to around about 100,000 households to bikes. One of the an interesting stat that came out of our um, travel diaries studies that TFGM carries out is that 74% of households don't have access to a, to a bike across Greater Manchester. So this is a very direct um, way of providing access to, to households that don't have a bike at the moment. As alluded to it again earlier on in other presentations, we do want to provide access for younger users. 
Um, recognise that's a bit of a challenge. It's something we're going to throw out to operators to demonstrate how that could happen. So obviously legislation around um, the age you can use e-bikes and things like that. Um, but we don't want it to be necessarily limited to people that have a credit card or a smartphone, for example. One of the things that we do want to control in Greater Manchester is that we will control the pricing and tariff, um, obviously in conjunction with whichever operator we protect, but we will basically take, be taking the revenue risk. So that's something that we will ultimately be able to set as part of tariff structure around other modes of transport in Greater Manchester. There'll be some local jobs created in, um, as, in conjunction with the scheme to do with the on street redistribution or maintenance stuff that goes on. And uh, again, we'll better connect residents and visitors to Greater Manchester to opportunities to move around. Their opportunities to move around. Um, so now it's a little bit on the, the scheme development. As I alluded to before, we don't own much land in, in Greater Manchester. Everything that will go on street will be done in conjunction with the districts. They ultimately have, um, say so, uh, well, a responsibility a role in deciding where the stations go and how the scheme will look on the ground or where, where the sites will be. So we set up a management board between ourselves, the Greater Manchester, uh, Greater Manchester Police to steer, steer the scheme development. We're going to appoint a service provider over the next few months who will be responsible for the one contract, who are, they're responsible for the design, implementation, operation, management, um, and procurement of any stuff that goes along with the bikes, what kind of stuff it is and all that kind of thing. Um, so it'll be a one a one shot contract. We've provided a de design brief, and yeah, I didn't mention at the beginning, but a big thanks to University of Salford colleagues. We've used a lot of the findings from the mobile scheme to inform our minimum requirements and kind of things that we want to see in the scheme, um, which has been very helpful in getting the approval of the the GMCA and the um, sort of senior leadership at. Transport for Greater Manchester. 